Hello guys, welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Filming this on the old potato cam again, uh, toilet cam. So just everything on the backup channel is done a bit budget. What is going on? Um, I've got the Betsy over there. Look at that, she looks awesome, doesn't she? Look how clean she is. Well, she's not actually very clean. I haven't washed it for about a week. Um, I haven't been using it too much, but it's dirty. Um, you probably just can't see in the camera. Just little bits of dirt from when you have the wipers on, you get that scum line down there and um well you know it's all good but what i've done is um actually let me keep the mic there what i've done is i've just done a wash on the wheels just to really decontaminate out the wheels properly and spend a bit of time really cleaning out the barrels used a bit of um tar and glue used a bit of fallout remover just did a really good job cleaning them so that nice gloss is kind of back now um we feel great actually I haven't didn't claim or anything like that i'm trying not to touch these don't really need to um, some interesting things well over a year ago in these barrels I put, I did the wheel arch clean and I put ceramic coating on the obsidian bright max obsidian I think it's called in there and I put geon rim on this on this caliper um, that, that ceramic coating the plastic one that's all in the engine bay is still going strong it's been well over it's been a lot longer than a year as well and it's still firing the water off. It's still there, that ceramic coating. I think because I've really cleaned the plastic, that coating, probably in porous plastic, just really sets into that plastic. And, you know, it's in there for a long time, that material. So it seems really good, um, ceramic coatings on plastic. But the one thing I would say is plastic gets shot, you know. That's those splash guards on the cars or the wheel arch linings, they get shot. And so putting a ceramic coating on a car that's done... 60,000 miles, 100,000 miles. I'm not sure what the benefits of that are. I think the newer you can get it onto those plastics, ideally when they're brand new, the, maybe the, the benefit comes in. But really good, actually. I'm quite cynical on detailing products. You know, I'm quite cynical. I love, love all of the scene and everything like that. But I'm still quite cynical. But these products, the ceramic coatings definitely last. You know, the materials definitely last. And people are all, always like claiming like, you know, ceramic coatings are snake oil is the word people use. It's not snake oil. It's just a material that's a lot harder, a lot more durable, you know, changes state, bonds, and will stay there for, for longer. The problem is, the, the debate in my mind is not about the reality of ceramic coatings being better, being longer lasting, having some benefits. It's the argument is whether on paintwork, putting these materials down that last that long that are very difficult to remove properly um, if you need paintwork done, although you can argue you just buzz it off anyway, but I don't know. Um, there's some unknowns for me um, around certain areas of ceramics, and it's just like the way it creates that seal between you and your paintwork that stops you kind of getting at your paintwork. Um, you know, so there's some benefits and there's some disadvantages, but I think if you're really into looking after your car as well, I'm not sure if ceramic coatings are kind of the way to go and I've chosen not to put them on this car and I think it's probably going to be the right option. Funny enough, the car is going to now have the bonnet and the bumper resprayed. BMW come back to me with a quote um, that they've split down the middle that I'm kind of happy with. So we're both kind of happy and they're going to do the work. Um, so that's great what else is going on guys dressings tire dressings i'm always looking at products even after i've reviewed them so i'm just looking again at this kind of geon tire express i've been using it a fair few times since the review kind of comparing it with car pro pearl this is watered down one to one this is neat um if you look down here this is this is the geon geon express and this is the car pro pearl you probably won't be able to, you can't really see the difference in this camera in this light but what you might think is that the geon tire express looks better in this low garage light and it does actually outside the sun was out about an hour or so ago when i was applying it and the geon is too glossy when the sun shines on it it's very it's very like shiny and kind of almost greasy looking but it settles down that's the problem and it, you kind of put it on really nice and thick like this. And if you leave the car overnight and the next day, just give it a quick wipe before you use it. 
you get a lot of lot, sort of impact out of it. This Gion Tire Express as well. They sort of say oh, it's a you know daily tire dressing one that you would use every couple of weeks. The durability on it is very very good. I can spot when it's on there. Um, I can see the repellency. Obviously, rubber is re kind of semi water repellent anyway, but I can see the extra repellency. Um, but I could also kind of see it on the tire when you when you get it wet. Same with Pearl. And uh, the durability of this tire express is better than they give it credit for. The problem is you still never get that fresh dress tire look unless you fresh dress your car. So it doesn't matter how long it lasts. You want to you you want to dress your car again so you get it looking like that. That's why durability, I think, is isn't a massive thing with these tire dressings. Um, really because you want the fresh dress look that's the way i see it doesn't matter about you know there's other products there that will say like you know i'll last six months on your tire well within two or three weeks it looks like my tire needs dressing so this six month tire dressing you know it's telling me i don't need to use it again for another six months but i want to dress my tire so that's why perhaps durability is a bit of a red herring maybe it should be about ease of application and the look so getting the look that you like and something that's easy to apply these two products here this product as it comes and as they tell you to use it because it's thick you're better off applying it with like an applicator to move it around um, Gion, uh, Pearl I used to use it kind of neat with an applicator but it's actually better watered down um, one to one so you could use when you're using watery products when you use applicators if you're using a microfiber one you'll pick up a lot of the product um, if you're using a sponge one sometimes with watery products it doesn't spread it quite as well so you could use a brush perhaps with a watery product if you want to um, and then just you always when you're working with tires want to have a rag microfiber that you're not too fussed about that you can that you can use to scrub down the tire and pick up you can scrub a tire with any cleaner you like scrub it five times ten times till you see the white foam not go brown is what they say but the key thing is not scrubbing it with a brush the key thing is after you've scrubbed it with a brush is going over it with the microfiber and this microfiber will really rip and pull that greasy dirt off of the tire and that's how you get it clean before you you, you know before you put it down sometimes the more dressings you put on there the more slimy and black it will be on your microfiber um, cloth when you go to clean it it's just the nature of, of the beast I think and some of these products are actually breaking down your dressing and you're sort of just removing dirt and bits of old dressing I think sometimes anyway there's not really much between these two products um, all I would say is that Gion, the Gion one is over concentrated and there's no instructions there about watering it down I don't think unless I, I could be wrong on that um, Whereas Pearl, it's definitely better one-to-one, -one, I think. Um, yeah, the, the, the thing with the Gion one, if you use it as is, it might be a bit too shiny today, but tomorrow it looks perfect. But I think you want to get the, you want it looking perfect immediately after you've applied it, don't you? Maybe. Anyway, it's all interesting stuff, and I'm trying to learn about these products as I go along. <laughs> I'm just doing another comparison on a couple of snow foams that I think will be popular interesting video sometimes I think it's better to um, you know I do these kind of big comparison videos where we test tons of products you know um, I don't know they, they, they are so much work to shoot those videos and put them together I'm not sure if they're the way to go about it or if I'm just better doing smaller comparisons I don't know so I'm just just experimenting with doing some other stuff got lots of new products in that I'm going to be comparing with looking at waterless washes looking at spray and rinses doing another spray wax comparison got loads of stuff lurking over there you can probably see can I zoom this in no I can't um, so I'm testing loads of stuff out at the moment um, and the last thing I was talking about on that post on patreon is the kind of condition of cars that are brand new in dealerships um, I mentioned I've been to quite a few dealerships in the last month and um, I've seen some shocking stuff with cars that that, that are worth more than a hundred thousand pounds, where the paintwork on them was absolutely shot to pieces. It's not really that much of a surprise. I've seen it before. It's not any one particular dealership. It's pretty much most of them. I don't think I've found one yet that really, really has cars that seem to be well maintained. Very difficult to 
you know, very difficult to make them immaculate. They've got to be clean, stuff like that. There will be marks in them, stuff like that. So, you know, the whole detailing thing about perfection on cars isn't true, doesn't exist. Going to be marks. But what you shouldn't have on brand new cars that are, you know, in that category of, you know, 50 to 100,000 pounds, they shouldn't be absolutely plastered in swirl marks. That's not right. Um, that's poor maintenance. Um, and I don't know what to say, really. <laughs> I don't know what to say. A lot of the dealerships, you know, some of you guys are professional detailers and were saying that, you know, they're not, they don't want to pay the money and stuff like that. Some of the, all of the big dealerships, or most of the dealerships, outsource it to other companies who have staff that clearly do not give a rat's. Because, like I said, there was a girl in there today just walking around. Like, and it, she was in La La Land. She was in absolute La La Land, just stringing it out. Um, you know, being in the showroom, um, you know, if you could string out, just spraying on it and give them a nice wipe rather than, I don't know, anyway, I don't want to start criticising people, but yeah, she, she wasn't too interested in doing anything with those cars. I wouldn't outsource it. If I was a manager of a dealership, I would employ one or two people that, you know, a young lad that was interested in cars, and I'd pay them a good amount to do it properly and just do a little bit of research myself, you know, if I wasn't into all of the detail and stuff, just do a little bit of research. I'd, you could ring a detailer and go and visit a detailer and tell them, get some advice for, for 50 quid and say, this is what I want to do. I would imagine that using a waterless wash product, you know, and clean microfiber cloths, if you want to sort of wipe the cars over in the showroom would be the way to go, you know. Use, use a waterless wash. I was testing one the other day, the Meguiar's one. Really good, bloody expensive. You know, if you've got to pay for it, it might not be that good. But the product was amazing. And using that with clean cloths is just going to be a simple fix over using black cloths. You know, they're not, not black cloths, grey cloths that have gone black. And an APC, you know, dirty, greasy cloths and putting all the grease marks and soap. And it was like this, you could see the residue of the product all over there, all these little buff marks. Oh, it's just horrible. Um, and the condition of the cars. I don't know if, you know, one of them, you know, it's a very expensive car with with some he heavy swirling on it for a brand new car that had never even been on the road looking at the brake discs. That's oh, just quite a shocking subject, really. Um, yeah, interesting one. I don't think any time soon that'll ever be fixed. Uh, it'll only be fixed start noticing people that are going to buy their car and saying actually the paintwork's shot to pieces on this I don't want it and then when they say oh we'll sort that out for you don't worry the customer will say no I don't want you with the greatest respect I don't want you touching it if you got it in that state in the first place then you don't know anything about maintaining cars so you know they'll probably fill it fill a glaze on it or something like that so who knows it's probably never going to get fixed until the awareness of of the quality of paintwork becomes more important and that will happen maybe because detailing and people at home um getting more into keeping their cars looking nice because it's a cool thing isn't it it's a really cool cool hobby um our cars you know we love our cars there's nothing else i love more than my car apart from my family but you know what i mean you know your family are one thing and and all that sort of stuff but you gotta have your boys toys and we all love our cars and all the detailing stuff and keeping the cars looking nice is important to um you know it's important to a certain extent so uh, i think it's going to um improve going forward anyway guys that's enough waffle for me <laughs> just checking in hope you're all okay and uh, take care and i'll see you soon